Hey guys, welcome back to another Electronics and More video. In this video, I'm going to be installing these very nice, good quality, low cost, super bright LED bar lights that give off white light. The vehicle that I'm going to be installing these on is a Ford Ranger pickup truck. Over the years, I've seen many of these being sold. Some of them good quality, some not. Some have plastic housings on them, very cheap lenses in the front, the seals aren't good. But what I can say is that the ones you're looking at right here are very good. This has all extruded aluminum housing. You can see fins for cooling. Over here are two stainless steel nuts that allow that bracket to be attached to the light. You would attach that to your vehicle. And when it's attached, you'll be able to rotate this light up or down or even left or right to get it in the correct position. The end caps are also aluminum. Right there, you can see that. And let me get my magnet and show you something. The screws that were used are non-magnetic stainless, which is a very good thing. The bolts, some of them are stainless that are magnetic, like the bigger ones. All right, but all the washers that you're looking at right here and these small hex socket for the Allen key, these are all non-magnetic. So that's a pretty good thing. A hex key is also included with this kit. The mounting brackets here are also made out of aluminum. Inside each one of these bar lights, which is around 7 inches long, 3 inches wide, and about 2 and a half inches deep, are 40 LEDs. You can see them lined up right here. There's 10, another 10, 10 across the top, 10 across the bottom, and a very nice reflective pattern. The wire that's used appears to be a silicone jacket, which is very good, and the wires look like about 18 gauge. Now the current draw for these will vary between 1.5 amps and 1.8 amps, and inside each one of these is a built-in regulator. So this light will operate at the exact same brightness regardless if you're using it at 11.5 volts or 14 and a half volts. So if this was powered up with the engine turned off at 12.6 volts, you're going to have the exact same light output as if the engine was idling and charging at 14 and a quarter volts. You can see it right here in this demonstration. I'll turn it on, it'll be around 10 and a half volts. I'm going to increase the voltage slightly to 11 and a half. You'll see the light get brighter. And then everything above that is going to be the same exact brightness but you'll see the current level gets lower as the voltage goes higher. Okay, so right over here, it's 10.5 and it's drawing 1.3 because it's not enough to get the whole thing going. So now I'm going to just go to 11.5, watch the light. You see it just stepped up in brightness, drawing 1.87 at 11.5. Now when I go to 12.5, you'll see the brightness does not change. See? But what happens, the current drops. So now it's 1.69. And if I go to 13, same level of brightness. Current is down to 1.5. And if you go to 14 and a half, like the alternator is running, same thing. Current's down to 139. And you can go up to 15 too if you want. 1.2, so both of these together be drawing right around 2.6 amps at that voltage. The lens is polycarbonate to resist chipping and cracking, and you can see there's a seal running along the inside right there, and it goes all around the edges and in every direction. You're hearing the nuts sliding on the groove of the extruded aluminum housing right here. That's what that is. Now I'm going to be installing these on the Ford Ranger pickup truck. The first thing I'm going to be doing is finding a mounting location for each one of these lights. I'm going to drill a hole, mount them, then we're going to go on to wiring them up. I'll show you exactly how I do it step by step. Let's get started. Alright, on this Ford Ranger you can see right over here there's this nice opening and it happens to be the perfect width top to bottom for those bar lights to sit in. So one is going to go on the left side and the other on the right side. 
Let me zoom in and show you exactly how I'm going to mount these. Now there's two ways that you can mount these lights on the vehicle. You may want to have them sitting up on the bumper in that area right there. If that's the case, the bracket would go underneath, bolted in. Then you could swivel up and down, whichever way you'd like. In my case, I'm going to be bolting it underneath here. So I'm going to turn it this way, and it's going to be installed just like that. I'm going to put them in the correct position, of course, perfectly lined up. One will be on this side. I'll drill a hole going straight up. Make sure if you drill, there's nothing on the opposite side. Always reach around and inspect first. So let me drill the two holes, and after the holes are drilled, I'll be right back. What I'm going to do to make sure the bumper doesn't rust where I drilled the hole, I'm going to take some black silicone or this gasket maker stuff, and I'm going to apply it all around this side of the bracket. I'm going to push this up against the bumper, apply more on the opposite side, and then I'm going to install the washer, the lock nut, and the nut. After I do that, we're going to go on to the next step. Now on this side, you're going to hold it with a pair of pliers because there's really not enough room to get a socket in there to hold that. So hold it like this, it will not move. On the opposite side, take your ratchet and tighten it down. Before you tighten this bracket down securely, you want to make sure it's perfectly straight so the light when it's mounted is not going to be angled to the left or to the right. Now to mount this, the two bolts are going to have to line up with these nuts through these openings in this bracket. And because I went upward instead of putting the bracket down, this wire is going to be facing up underneath here. Now this should be sealed, but what I'm going to do to ensure that water cannot find its way in, I'm going to take the black silicone sealant and I'm going to fill up that whole area around the wire before mounting this light. If you mount it this way, there's no reason to do that because the water would run down and over the wire. Okay, this light's installed. It's solid, does not move. When you mount the light to the bracket, Put one of the bolts in first, line it up with the nut, put the bolt in, and then the other one you're going to have to take a little mirror like you see right here to look behind, and then you can take the Allen key and move the nut back and forth until it lines up with the other hole, and then you could tighten down that bolt. Let me install the other light to the right, and then we're going to work on the wiring. The installation of both bar lights is now complete. Everything is securely tightened. In order to make sure that these are on the same angle, I took a torpedo level, looking where the bubble lines up, held it on the face of that one, and then I went over here and made sure it matched on this one. To make sure this light and that light are on the same plane, I took my level and I just held it across the center and they both line up flat. I'm going to take the two black wires and solder about a six foot section of black wire onto this and I'm going to put a ring connector on the end and attach it to chassis ground. The two reds are going to have about a 12 foot section of 18 gauge copper wire and I'm going to route that all the way around the fender securing it with nylon ties and pass it through the firewall where I can continue the rest of this job. Okay, you can see the two cables have a larger heat shrink. I'm going to slide that over this whole thing in a minute. I'm going to put some black silicone all over this connection. So once I heat shrink this, water has no chance of finding its way in. On this side, you can see the two black wires twisted together, soldered. Now I'm going to slide up the heat shrink. Like that. And this is the finished product multiple layers of heat shrink, a larger one over the outside with silicone underneath that and a couple of nylon ties. Now I'm going to position this out of the way, nylon tie it behind the bumper and here you can see I use blue instead of red that's because I had a whole bunch of 18 gauge blue laying around. I was going to use this ring connector on this white wire which is the negative of the bar lights but because the battery was right here in the same route of where I'm running the wires, I decided to unclamp this and slide my wire in for the negative, tighten it down securely, and then I took the blue wire and ran it along the wire loom all the way towards the firewall. Let's go inside now and I'm going to show you how to connect it up. 
Okay, my blue wire is right over here. I inserted it inside of a rubber grommet, pulled it through, so there definitely won't be any water leaking around that wire. Panel's been removed under the steering column. So what I have to do now is look for a ignition key on power supply for these lights. And it's not going to have to be a lot of power because it's only going to draw a maximum of around three or three and a half amps. So you can take an LED test light like you see right here, probe the back of the fuse box, and then you're going to turn the key on and off until you find one. Look for a wire that's much thicker than the others. Don't look for a thin one. When you do find a wire, you're going to spread it apart, use one of these tap splices, and you're going to connect it to an inline fuse holder like you see right over here. Now this one has a 5 amp fuse inside of it. You're going to take the other end on the right and that's going to be connected to a switch which is going to be mounted on your dashboard. This is a push on, push off, make sure it's rated for the current that you're going to be using. And then the other side here gets connected to the blue wire leading to the LED bar lights. Now I'm not going to be tapping the back of the fuse box. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be accessing a spot on the front of the fuse box that's empty. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, it's going to be a little difficult to see what I'm doing, but there's two empty spaces right here above this 30 amp fuse. And the door is right here, so I can't get the camera any closer. But if I probe this, you'll see the LED light is off. Place it on the on position, and there you go. Now it's the off position, on position. The left side over here doesn't have any blade terminal in it. It's completely hollow. So what I decided to do was make this. This is a 10 amp fuse. And you can see one side I soldered the wire onto. This fuse should never blow because the lights only draw around 3 amps. The only way it should blow is if the wires got short circuited. So I'm going to take this now and insert it into the fuse box, take the blue wire and run it over to my switch. Plug it in. Beautiful. Now let's take a look to see if there's power coming off of this wire. And there you go. And right there, you can see it with the wire routed in. And nylon ties with the blue wire. Both wires are now in the correct area. Push button switch is going to go right here. I'll drill a hole in the panel. And that's it. Let me do that and I'll be right back. Okay, this is what it looks like when the switch is installed underneath the steering column. I'm going to wait till it gets dark and show you how the headlights look along with the new bar lights. Okay, I'm on a dark road at night in the truck, and this is the normal headlights. I'm now going to turn on the bar lights. Here we go. Look at the difference, how bright that is. The light goes all the way off to the sides, and all the way off to here, to that fence. Very, very nice. Let me get out and show you. Okay, this is normal headlights, and now the bar lights. Super intense, actually blinding. This is something that you'd want to use off-road or in a dark area with no other cars around. Works extremely well.